Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another episode of Trailmakers, and we got an update to dive into today. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going through all the new aspects of the update and thinking about potential implications of what this means for building stuff and creating things. And I'm really excited about this because the big part of the update is a tone generator, essentially meaning you can make jingles and music and you can pretty much make an entire song if you wanted to. So I'm really excited to dive into how that works. Another thing, we have a new cannon and the uh, complete rework of how bullets work in the game. And we have a couple new building pieces as well. And there's also a whole slew of mod making changes, which I'm not going to be going into because I don't know anything about mod making. So I can't really comment much on that. Oh, and I almost forgot. They've actually reworked the save system for blueprints and also adjusted how the builder works a little bit in some convenient ways. I got the patch notes up on my other monitor over here. All right, so let's dive in and let's first take a look at the new cannon and bullets because I think that's kind of fun. All right, you know what? Let's actually start off with building ourselves a nice test vehicle here for slapping things on and testing them with. All right, there we go. Super, super basic test vehicle. It drives, it functions. So for small cannons, uh, we go into gadgets, I believe. And uh, this is the tiny cannon. This is the new cannon that we have here. So to compare and contrast, this is what the small cannon looks like, and this is what the tiny cannon looks like. So you can see it is much, much smaller. It is a two by one uh, area, or two by one by one, I guess. So this functionally, as far as I know, behaves exactly the same as a small cannon. It has the same projectile, it has the same firing rate, it has the same everything. But the big advantage is you can fit so many more of these bad boys onto a creation. So if I wanted to put like two small cannons on this thing, it would be really kind of awkward. Like I'd have to put it like this a little bit, or I could get rid of this stuff at the front and I could put one down here and one up there, but then they wouldn't be in line. So then I could do this instead. But for me to put two tiny cannons on here, these actually attach at the back. So I could just do that. And then I could put two right on the front right here. And that takes up uh, less space than one small cannon. So let's go ahead and check out how these things look. Ooh, whoa, that's interesting. So they no longer home in on creations like they used to. That's one of the big differences. And as you can see, the projectile definitely looks different. Oh, whoa, look at that. Well, I definitely have some kickback on those things. That looks kind of weird. So let's spawn in a wall and let's see what kind of effect it has on walls. Oh, and just really quick to show you, you'll see that they're pretty much exactly the same, the small and the tiny cannons as far as projectile goes. All right, so let's hop into blueprints and actually, I can actually show you what's new with the blueprints uh, while I'm here. So I have a wall here somewhere, here we go. So this, you can see when I hover over it, nothing happens. But if I right click on this, I can say edit description and I can tag it now, just like you would in uh, uploading to the workshop. And this thing is kind of, it's immobile. Yeah, that's the good tag. And this can be target wall. And then I can say, it's a wall, shoot it, or something. Uh, it'd be a help if I could spell something. So now I can save. And then now when I go here, you can see when I mouse over this stuff, you get nothing. But when I mouse over this, I get the title and the description that I put in. So you can put like, you can put controls, you can type out the controls of your stuff, and now you can see it just by hovering over it so you don't forget the controls of your own creations. Now, right now, I don't see a way to search your blueprints, which I'm hoping they're gonna do, especially now that you can type names and stuff of your blueprints. It would be really nice if I could just search for wall or target, and then that would just show up amongst everything, because I have so many blueprints guys it is so hard for me to find stuff sometimes especially it's all in a single row another difference that they've made is uh now if i make a change now if i save this creation i can just save it i can name it uh test update car so i click save now it shows up here i can see it says space to fire now it's really cool let's say i make a change to this and i add this cannon back here now before when i went to click save it would actually save a new copy, and then every time you saved, you would just build up a bunch of slightly different copies of things. So now I can click save as if I want a new copy, or I could just click save. And what it has done, if I go into my blueprints, is it actually has just overwrote the previous save rather than making a new file automatically. So that is also a really useful way to declutter 
uh, your blueprints. All right, so here's the wall. So apparently they've made some adjustments to like the collisions of bullets. I don't know if that's going to be noticeable with what you're seeing here. For me, it's not super obvious what the difference is, but I guess they just made some adjustments to the collisions of the bullets. When they impact things, it's more obvious now, which I don't know, seems obvious enough to me. Oh, okay. Apparently I hit the magical piece. <laughs> So that is the small cannon. I love this because it's going to be so much easier to build uh, things with lots and lots of projectiles, as you, can, as you can see what I'm doing here. So many more can fit in such a small area. This is awesome. And I can copy this to the other side. And then now, oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks good. That looks real good. <laughs> And apparently they've also optimized the bullets so that they're less intensive on your computer. So I think that means we can have more guns, which means I'm probably going to create some type of massive gun in response to this. Yes, I quote, significantly reduced the bandwidth used so you can have a ton more bullets in the game without lag. So we're gonna be putting that to the test in a future video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. I wanna find the point in which we can make the game lag when it comes to bullets now. <laughs> all right, so now for all you design freaks out there who really, really like making nice looking things, uh, we have a couple of new pieces and that is the inverted corner block. So we got these things right here. So here, let me actually, let's build something on this that we can use to demonstrate or try out these corner blocks. All right, so now presumably if I built a wedge thing kind of like this, what I was able to do was use this block here to kind of round out the outside corners like so. But now apparently if we wanted to do the opposite of this here, let me just, let me just copy this over. Let's say I just invert all of these edge pieces. So now these corners do not make sense at all. So I shall delete them. And now I can use an inverted corner just like so. And that can give us a nice, smooth, inverted, like concave thing instead of like a convex thing. So these are pretty much just opposite shapes of each other. And of course, we just have various sizes of these things for all your different needs. So yeah, a very welcome addition. I know a lot of people are gonna get a lot of use on building amazing looking things with these new blocks. Now, another change they've made is apparently how logic and stuff gets displayed. So I don't know if I have a creation that uses a whole lot. Of oh, I do have a creation that uses logic. I gotta find it though. All right, here we go. I think this is my dragster that's afraid of speed. So if I go really fast, it'll start tearing itself apart. I'm pretty sure. Let's see if we can demonstrate that here. All right, yeah, so there it goes. I, I don't even know what, oh uh, yeah, it's just, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like speed. It really doesn't like speed. <laughs> so I think out of like, I don't really use a whole lot of logic in creations, but I think out of most of my stuff, this has some logic in it. So let's see if we can see how it looks in the builder now. So if I go to do logic here, so I go to settings and oh, wow. So as you can see, these are much smaller which I think helps a lot because there was a lot of overlap before and now they're much less likely to overlap each other. They're a lot easier to single out individually. So that's nice. Now, another cool thing is rather than clicking individually on everything, like say you have a bunch of engines, whoops, I accidentally misclicked there. But say you have a bunch of engines that you want a logic gate to uh, turn on and off, but then you want another logic gate to turn off all those same engines. So like, here's a bunch of engines back here. So rather than individually clicking on every single engine like so, I can actually click on one. I could just hold down my mouse click and then if I drag it, it's going to turn on anything that it comes across. So you can see as I sweep over all this stuff, it just automatically turns it on without me, me without me needing to click. So that's just a much more quick and efficient way to deal with that. Another really cool thing, which I'm gonna be using a lot is if you control and double click on a block. So I'm gonna control and double click this. It then selects every single block of that kind. So that is a two by one block. So now you see if I lift these up, these are all of the two by one blocks in my build. And you can see this is not a very symmetrical build. Oh, that's because I have logic on this side and not logic on the other side. Um, but now let's say I want my engine settings to be different. So I can control click on these engines, go into my settings, and now I could change my controls for the engines if I wanted to change all that, rather than having to do each engine individually or or clicking on each individual engine to select them as a group or whatever. 
That's also useful for things like if I have steering hinges and I want my front and rear steering hinges to have the same strength or whatever. Just anytime you need to select all the same parts. If I want to get all these shield pieces off here, there we go, all these shield pieces, and now I have no more shield pieces. Perfect. All right, so now let's dive into what we've really been waiting for, the tone generators. So I'm gonna build myself a wall here that we can just slap tone generators on. So now tone generators are under accessories and sound makers. And then here you can find the tone generator. And even before we get into the tone generator, they've actually modified the horn and the square horn as a result. So let's just set these on uh, one, we can go two, and then we can go three for that. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing this separately. So normally the horn and the square horn would sound like this. So there's the square horn and there's the horn. But now the square horn, you can also change it to alarm. I don't know if that was there before. I never really used the square horn. So you can change between those two modes, but the really new thing that is definitely new is the, uh, you can change the pitch. So now I can go way up. That sounds terrible. Or I can go way down. And it sounds like that. It gets a little bit more dark and creepy. And then you can do those same things with the horn. So I can have the horn go way, way down. It can be a fog horn style. Or it can go way, way up. And just be like a car horn. Sounds like a car horn there. All right, but we don't really care about those, do we? We care about this thing, the tone generator. So let's go look into the settings. Uh, you can obviously set your pitch. And as you can see, the default value is C. Every plus one or minus one is a semitone. And then we have five different sounds to choose from. You get your square sound, which sounds like this. And you get your pulse sound. And you can create some really techy soundy stuff if you just have random things of these just pulsing all around. You get your saw sound. You got triangle. And of course you got your noise sound. Now fun fact, in case you guys weren't aware, the names of these actually come from the shape of the sound wave. So if you notice the square, this is actually the, say, the shape of a square wave. So then pulse is kind of like a square, but just smaller pulses. Saw is like a sawtooth. You could have, these are saw up it looks like, but you could also have saw down if it was reversed, which is a slightly different sound. Uh, triangle, obviously triangle. And then noise, it's just kind of really random. I'm actually surprised they don't have a sine wave. A sine wave is like the purest form of sound. And a sine wave is kind of like a triangle, but just imagine if it was rounded rounded edges instead of pointy edges. All right, so if you wanted to create music, it'd probably be useful to experiment with these settings and stuff. What they've, they've modified these settings a little bit to have, they have like a little tool tips to explain it better how they work. And they also, I think they look better here too. So, and there's one little nuance that I've discovered that I don't know if it's gonna change in the future, but I'll show you. So let's say I wanna create a, a basic chord arpeggio where we just keep cycling up the arpeggio of the chord. So I'll, I'll need four notes. So I'll set up four of these. And then what I'll do is I'll, let's just say we'll do a C major chord. So the first pitch is gonna be C. So the second one is gonna have to be the third of the chord, which in semitones would be one, two, three, four. There we go. So then the fifth of the chord is going to be at seven. And then of course your octave is gonna be 12 se semitones from the root. So here's something I would like to see added into this is if I just click on one of these, when it's selected, I'd like to be able to hear the tone. So if I click on this, it'd be really nice if I could just hear what tone they are. Cause right now I can't hear the tone unless I build it and then press the button that it's assigned to, or I have to change a value and then change it back. Or I can change the, the sound to hear it. But yeah, it'd be really nice if I could just really quickly reference what each note is. So if the developers are watching this, maybe may a fun little addition, yeah? Okay, so now if I press number three here, these are all gonna sound at the same time in a nice, beautiful C major chord if I've did my semitones correctly. There we go. Or you could have like your victory, you've won the prize sound. <laughs> there you go. So now what if I want these things to arpeggiate? That's where these programs can be really, really cool. So I'm gonna make each of these notes arpeggiate one after another. And I also want them to cut off so they don't interrupt the future notes. So what I'm gonna do is have them cut off after a quarter second. So I'll set a quarter second duration 
on each one of these. So what that makes happen is if I hold down the button, they cut off after a quarter second. But now I want them to go sequentially. So that means after 0 0.25 uh, seconds, this one's gonna trigger. So that's why I'm delaying it by a quarter of a second. And I want this one to trigger after that. So I'm gonna delay it by a half second. And I want this one to trigger after that. So I'm gonna delay it by three quarters of a second. So now they should cycle through when I press the button. But the problem is I have to manually re-trigger it every single time. But let's say I want it to just keep re-triggering as long as I hold the button and cycling through that arpeggio. Then I have to set the pause. Now I did test this to see if this could work beforehand, but I found out that the pause needs to factor in the duration. So essentially all of these take one second to go through their cycle, but rather than repeating after one second, I actually need to subtract the duration because that's added into it. So I have to go by 0.75 and that's going to equal a total of one second until it re-triggers. So 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. So now, if I hold down the button, you get this. And that is your basic C major arpeggio. So then of course, you could have an entire song where you just press a button and this is gonna happen. Oh, actually, I didn't realize, I, I don't know, is there a hold? Oh, toggle, yes. So now I don't even have to hold down the button. I just tap three once and now it's hands free. It'll play all the way through whatever I've just set. But personally, I'm more of a minor key person. So if you change this third to a minor instead of a major, that's more my style, yeah. That's more my style right there. C minor, not C major. Major scales are too happy and go lucky for me. So I am definitely gonna do a music machine at some point, probably just like a makeshift piano where I can just play something on my keyboard rather than having it play something automatically. I think that may, might be more fun to experiment with. I think it might be really, really fun. I don't know if they're planning on expanding much with the sounds here, but if we actually had some type of like a uh, percussive sounds other than noise. You can kind of make your own cymbal sounding sounds or snare sounds with a noise uh, waveform, but you really need like a kick sound or something. So let's see if I can make this noise sound just sound like a timekeeping hi-hat or something. So I want this to be a really, really short duration. So I'm gonna have it be a 10th of a second. So then if I wanted to do every half second, we have to do that minus that. So that'd be 0 0.4 and it should hit every other note. So it should hit here, here. And actually I can make it sound more like a hi-hat by um, upping the pitch. So now it should be more like a hi-hat. There we go. And then I can make like a cymbal sound, a crash that happens maybe every couple of measures. So I'll have the duration be one second and then every three seconds it'll repeat. So that means every four repeats will have a crash cymbal, I think. Let's see if this works. There we go. I mean, it's not like the crashiest crash symbol because it just kind of cuts rather than tapering off slowly like a symbol normally does, but we're getting onto some music making here, right? <laughs> All right, so now just out of curiosity, I'm just gonna copy and paste these and see what happens if they double up on each other. It's just louder. But what you could do is let's select these four and change them to saw so they are a slightly different sound. Now it'll actually add to the overall synth sound of it. There we go. Oh, and here, let's actually, let's set them on a different uh, button so we can play them separately. So here is number four. Here's number and together. And what if we do like... Ooh. Ooh, and then we could harmonize them. So let's actually switch them out so that this is three. This one's seven. This one's 12. And then this one is 15. So now they should be harmonized with each other. There we go. And you know what? I'm really tempted now. Let's just extrapolate this onto a full chord harmonization. So now we go 7, 12, 15, and there's a 19? Yep, 19. All right, and go. There we go. 
Oh, but you know what? Of course we have to change these to, let's put these on triangle. So now we have a full audio spectrum of different sounds and different notes playing together. There we go. All right, well, I am really looking forward to seeing what the community is able to build with the music stuff. However, keep in mind, if you're a builder that is trying to get their stuff shown in, a, in one of my videos, I can't use copyrighted music. So if you're gonna make music, make your own music, all right? And make sure you confirm in the description that it's original music or something. Otherwise, I might just think it's a song I haven't heard before and I, I'm, I might not risk playing it. So let me know down in the comments below if there's anything that you'd like to see in particular when it comes to playing around with this update. We got the small cannons and the new parts and uh, obviously the tone generator block and stuff. If there's anything in particular that you interested in seeing me try to do, leave that in the comments below. A quick reminder, if you're interested in getting some Scrapman merch before the holidays, before Christmas, before the end of the year, this week is pretty much like the cutoff week. If you wait after this week, it might not get shipped to you in time. So if Scrapman merch is something you've been considering as a as a gift for somebody or as a way to support the channel at all, I'm just letting you know right now, this is the cutoff week for getting it before the holidays. If you wanna see some more awesome Trailmakers content, then go ahead and check out this playlist on the end screen right here. I hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.